Hello everyone, Adrian Antolak from CD Hacks here. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create carpet materials in Cinema 4D Octane. Let's get into it. So first, we're gonna click at the Material Manager button here. Go to the Create, Extensions, C4D Octane and Octane Material. Let's apply it to our model. Let's double click at the material, go to the node editor, let's close the material editor. And then here, let's click at this node here. And before we start messing with the nodes, let's click at this button here so it snaps the grid, just easier to organize. And in this node here, we're gonna go to basic, change the material type to, uh, we can actually leave it at diffuse. We're gonna just change the BRD of model to DGX energy preserving. And I'm going to move our mouse to the bottom of this list here and check the material layer. Now the material layer tab will appear here. We're going to click on it. Let's click now to add the add layer. And let's add layer group. Let's position it on our grid so it's easier to later follow tutorial. Let's now add speckle layer metallic layer and speckle layer again let's grab the first speckle layer let's position it now let's grab the metallic layer let's position it and the same thing with the last speckle layer um we're gonna change the name we can actually leave the name of the first speckle layer but we're gonna change the name for the other two so i'm gonna right click on it edit rename and call it flakes and we can change the name here as well to clear code. And if you want, we can change the name here to just specular. Now let's go back to this node here. And let's click C to open this search bar. And let's type in fall off. Do it again. So click C and we're going to type this time gradient and pick the octane gradient. Let's connect the output from the file of map to the input of the gradient and output from the gradient to the input to the fuse. Let's solve note this gradient by clicking D while having it selected. And we can see this really nice file of effect here. We're going to change those two sliders together, like so. We want darker shades on perpendicular angle of the falloff. And on the facing angles towards our camera, we want brighter color. So we're going to change it like this. So it's easier for us to balance it out. Later, color values will go with. I'm going to change the fall of skew factor to 1 for now. And let's adjust the color right away. So we're going to set it to full red maybe. Actually maybe like 80%. Let's try that. And 35% on this slider. And on this slider I'm going to change it to 80% on saturation and 20% in brightness. Like so. Basically, in a diffuse, we want a bit darker colors compared to the next layer we're going to use, which is the specular. But first, let's select this node and click D so we can uncheck slow node. And right now, we have really metallic look here. It's because we have this flakes material layer here. So let's go to the layer opacity of this layer and change the opacity to zero. And let's do the same for the clear code. Now, let's go back to specular. Here, make sure it's on one in the layer opacity. And we're going to go to basic and change the BRD of model to GGX energy preserving. In the specular, we're going to change the color to red, something really saturated, maybe 95% and 100% on brightness. Now we're going to go to the EOR and we're going to change it to maybe four or four now, or maybe even six. In the roughness, we're going to set it to 0 0.4. Okay, now we're going to move to the flakes layer 
And for the flakes, I'm going to change the camera to the close up here. And I'm going to click C and I'm going to type in flakes. And connect the output from the flakes to the input of the normals. And of course, we need to change the layer opacity to one to see what's going on. Right now it's way too big, so we're going to change a few stuff here. I'm going to right click on it, add to selected and transform. Again, right click, add to selected and projection. Let's organize it slightly. And in texture projection, I'm going to change it to box. It will be so small that it will really doesn't matter if there's seams, you will not see them. So in a transform, I'm going to change the scale to 0 0.01. And I think that's pretty good. I'm going to go back to the flakes and I'm going to change the flake size to maybe 0 0.8. I'm going to add a bit of variation by changing the flake size variance to 0 0.25. And in the blend factor, I'm going to change it to 0.75. I might change it later. We're going to see in a second if it needs a bit of change. Uh, let's go back to this material layer and change the roughness to 0.25. And also make sure in the basic, the BRDF model is changed to GGX energy preserving. Now let's hit C and type in fall off. Let's add the fall off and connect the output from the fall off to the layer opacity here, like so. Right now we can see it's in the wrong angle right now. So we're gonna change the minimum value and maximum value. So I'm gonna just swap those two numbers and it's still too much, of course. So let's just adjust it by changing the maximum value to 0 0.1. This will just make sure there's a bit of flakes visible still on this angle. And in the minimum value, we're going to change it to 0 0.5. So now it's blending way better. And we need to now change the fall of skew factor, which is the balance between these two angles. So let's try one, maybe 0 0.2. That's a bit too much. So maybe 0 0.6. 0 0.6 seems to be really good. And in the flakes, I'm going to go back to the specular tab here. And I'm going to change the color to red by boosting up the saturation here, like 60%. Of course, you can tweak it. Maybe you want a bit more saturated look. I'm going to go with 60, which is just fine here. And let me zoom out here. Now let's go to this clear coat material layer. And in here, we pretty much just need to change the layer opacity to one and it will be already fine. But we can change a few things to get a bit better result. For example, EOR, you can switch something in between 1.5 to even 2, depending on how reflective you want the clear code to be. I'm going to go with 1.7. I'm going to change the roughness to 0 0.04. Uh, I'm going to also change the BRDF model to GGX Energy Preserving. Let me change the camera again. And you can see we have just a tiny bit of roughness in here. Uh, we're going to also add a bit of bump as well. So let's click C and type in Octane Noise. Let's connect the output from the noise to the bump uh, input. And right now we need to definitely change a few things here. So let's click in the noise UVV transform and projection as well. We're going to change in the projection, texture projection to three planar. And to make the three planar work, we of course need to add three planar node in front of it. So we're going to click C, type in three planar. We're going to add this node here. And you can drag it around and hold Alt to snap it to the node, like so. When you see the green lines appear, you can just leave it automatically be in between those two nodes here. And right now we have three planar already working. All we need to do is just make sure it's not as strong so let's lower the value of the power to maybe 0 0.01 and let's lower the scale as well to 0 0.01 or maybe just 0 0.1 let's try to find a nice balance between power here and the scale here oh also in the noise i'm gonna change the octaves to one and I think this is quite decent right now. So 0 0.001 in this case, 
in a power and in a scale 0 0.01. And we get pretty nice result here. Let me go back to the previous camera. And I think the last thing we can do is changing the values in the first gradient we set up for the diffuse here to slightly darker color. So I'm going to just change it here quickly. And let's go to the flakes as well here. Maybe change the specular to like 80%. So it's a bit more saturated. In this specular layer, we can also change the roughness to maybe 0 0.3. And yeah, now it looks pretty decent. Maybe it's a bit too saturated. So I'm going to try to balance it out. Okay, this looks fine. And now let me show you how you can achieve a pleasant look. So I'm going to change the darker side here to complete different color like blue. I'm going to click D by selecting this node, slow node it. And I'm going to change the fall of skew factor slightly so it's more balanced between those two colors. I'm going to hit D button again while having this node selected to disable the stall node. And I'm going to select both of these nodes and Ctrl C to copy. And I'm going to Ctrl V here to paste it. And I'm going to connect to the specular here. And of course, we need to change the brightness in both of these colors all the way up. And maybe even the saturation to like 90% in both. Let me soul note it again. And I think in this case, because it gets a bit more saturated, we need to balance it again. Let's see, maybe two. 1.5 seems to be okay here, or maybe just one. Let's see, maybe just one. We need to copy it again, Control C, Control V, and we're gonna connect it to the specular of the flakes. Let's add a bit of fall of skew factor value here. 1.5 right now. And yeah, right now we have really nice opalescent material here. And we can, for example, now completely unplug those two nodes here. So we have just clear code and this gradient here. And we're going to do simple glossy material here. So we're going to solve note the gradient and also change in a fall of, fall of skew factor to 1.3. So we need to find a nice balance between those two colors. Uh, I think that's right now pretty good. So we have a darker one on the perpendicular angles and on the facing towards camera, we have way brighter ones and we left clear coat untouched. So we have really nice glossy material right now. Let me control Z to the previous state of this gradient, this one. Uh, I'm gonna also click control Z two more times. So we have those two connected and we're going to change this whole thing to a matte look. So I'm going to change the roughness in the clear code to 0 0.4 and the flakes to 0 0.6 and the specular here, maybe 0 0.5. Let's see if it works. We can also disable the flakes completely if we want to. Let's see if we can balance it out a bit better here in a clear code node. And here in a speckle layer, we're going to change the roughness to 0 0.45. And we have pretty cool matte look right now. And I think the last thing we can do is let, let's go back to the previous state here first. So here, we're going to disable the flakes. And in a speckle layer, we're going to change the roughness to really low value, like 0 0.1, maybe 0 0.15. And in a clear code, we're going to change the EOR to like two. And I know we still have this gradient here uh, in all of the pretty much layers aspect the clear code. So we now have um, chrome carbon material with opalescent uh, effect on it. And I think that's it for this tutorial. I think I cover most of the basic carpent materials variation and hopefully you'll learn something new today.
definitely material layers are really strong things to consider when you do any materials. A lot of people just do everything here and forget about this really awesome option of layers. And if you want, you can add even more layers to it. Add like smudges, maybe um, scratches, etc. So there is a lot of potential to make really realistic carbine materials in Octane. And if you don't want to go through all of this process I just showed, all these material layers and tweaking all the settings till it's exactly how it's supposed to be, you can just go to our website, CG Hacks, and get our 140 carpet materials for both Redshift and Octane. And you will have access to a lot of variations, colors, everything will be already tweaked and you will just focus on the fun and making your own renders. So yeah, make sure to check them out and see you in the next one. Bye.